Welcome to this episode of DIY3DTech.com. We're going to be doing a bit of an unboxing here. So we've got a rather long package in here. And by the title, you probably know what's in here. So I've purchased a second lead screw uh, for the Creality CR10. So in this episode, I know there's been a lot of videos about uh, the second lead screw. But I want to talk a little bit more about why you might want one and why I got one. So let's go ahead, though, first and take a look at what I got. So I did actually order this from a U.S. vendor. It's like about three bucks more than waiting for it to come in from China and I got it in like three freaking days so very cool it was worth the extra couple bucks came very fast so one of the biggest things is we have a new set of cords because uh, we need to obviously uh, add in um, another Z motor and let's take a look at this cord in a little bit more detail um, one of the things, apparently, they give us the braiding separately, so we have to string on our own braiding, which might be a little bit interesting. Uh, but let's take a look at this. So we have the Z, uh, which comes in here. So obviously this must split off the motor. And uh, what it looks like here is they have soldered on and shrink-wrapped um, an extra Z cable. So I'm guessing like the uh, tarantula, because I've added a second Z-axis to the tarantula, that, that they flip these so the motors run the correct way. And so it looks like this goes to one side, this goes to the other side. So the cable looks already pre-set up. And they've given us a new Z end stop, which is typical. So you should expect this modified Z cable and Z end stop cable in your package. So we got that, which is good. And then we got our braided cable. I'm going to set this kind of off over here in the side for the time being. We've got our lead screw, which makes the package so long. Looks pretty, pretty nice shape. Um, looks like it's it's uh, square if I don't bend it. Set that over here. We get a flex coupler and another motor, and so that's all goodness. And then we get uh, another top, another motor mount, some mounting hardware and the bracket with uh, anti-backlash nut on it. So what we'll redo is, uh, redo, what we'll do is we'll reuse the wheels from the um, existing carriage assembly and simply add a second side to it uh, for with the an uh, brass anti-backlash nut. So pretty straightforward. Um, and I'll do a video on the installation. The installation's not too big. You do have to open up the box, cut some wire ties, drop in the new cable and do some mounting of your your brackets and stuff like this um, and uh, again I'll do that in a different video but this video I kinda wanna focus on why why would you wanna do this because I, I I'm I'm gonna say up front I have the links for all this below but you know if you're not doing a lot with the Creality and just you know kind of hobby printing I would say you probably don't need this but what cases might you need this and why did I decide to do this because I've had the Creality for quite some time and I haven't had really any major issues but one of the things I want to do is I want to I'm gonna go up to a bigger nozzle I've been watching uh, CNC kitchen I really like the 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 style and the um, the way he edits the videos and stuff like that and, and he hasn't done this but he has um, done a change to the hot end and, and uh, put a larger hot end, a direct drive, right on the gantry. Now the uh, typical CR10 has the Bowden extruder off to the side so it's a little bit less weight. I'm really thinking about maybe making the same mod as he does. I am going to go to with the Bowden uh, 0.6 millimeter nozzle and really focus on having that machine uh, print uh, kind of larger stuff, if you will, because mostly what I do in that case is PLA, and I think that would be a great printer for that. And uh, the reason I'm going with the second access, uh, Axie, is um, one of the things I want to be able to move faster and move more plastic in a controlled manner. And that's where I've kind of drawn this out a little bit. This gets a little bit kind of complicated because I know when I did the shootout between the JG Aurora 
and the creality. You know, I, I noted that as being one of the important things is the creality has two Z axis. And I do think that's important. You know, is it a, you know, uh, kind of like life threatening thing or life threatening thing? Absolutely not. You can live with one. There's a lot of tarantulas out there with one. There's a lot of printers with one. And it, again, it really comes back to what you're doing. Now, when I look at this, the way that the, the creality works today is you have two uprights and then you have a lead screw. Now the lead screw actually interestingly enough is actually placed behind one of the uprights. So what's happening is when this lead screw puts force to go up, what's going to happen is this back side, this side over here which is undriven, is going to remain still for a very short period of time but it is going to remain still until there's enough movement or energy on this side to overcome the friction on this side to make it move up. To kind of demonstrate what I want to do is I'm going to use this, I'm going to move this over here, kind of move things around. So I have this ruler. Think of this ruler as being our X gantry and what happens when I push this side? Notice this side stays the same. Now, but on your creality it moves. Why is that the case? Well, that's because the case is we have a constrained point over here. So because the wheels on the creality are up against here, when this goes up, the force of this at a certain point is going to start pushing this side up also along like in our ruler example. So as we start pushing here eventually it will start moving like that. And this is one of the things I talked about in the tramming video too, is I showed clearly, I've got about uh, you know 0.1 millimeter difference uh, or sag in this because there's no mechanical support and come on guys I had a lot of people write me say mine's got no sag. It's physically impossible for you not to have some sort of sag. You have gravity pulling here and then you have a mechanical support there. You know it, it's simple physics. Now is it a lot? No. And, and you know is it going to affect low poly Pikachu's? No. Is it going to affect Darth Vader heads? Probably not. However, again, if you want to print a higher precision, you want to print faster, you want to print bigger, and you want to do all those things, that's where this second lead screw, at least in my humble opinion, becomes important to add, is when you're doing these things. Because what, I, what my intention here is, is to add this lead screw, grow, go up to a .6 nozzle, and move up the print speed uh, quite a bit. Of this and that's that's kind of what I want to experiment with here with is where where can I go with that because one of the things I, I also want to back up and talk about in this model is the hot end and, and again we're not talking about we're not going to be moving inches so please don't write me down below there is going to be movement because one of the pieces is we have this hot end which moves back and forth so we have various components of force here so as this is moving this hot end is building inertia as it moves to the other end. So you're going to get some whipsawing, you're going to get some vibrations, you're going to get some anomalies the further it moves away from the mechanically constrained axis to one of just being constrained by wheels. Now one of the pieces that I do and I think most people do with the Creality is we set up a force here. In other words, I've actually sprung mine out so there's actually um, uh, you know, a force that holds against the wheels tight. So it takes very little motion on this axis to pull this up. Now, I have actually used a high speed camera to film this, and it's very hard to be because the, we're talking like 0.1 of an inch. You really have a hard time seeing the motion unless you really kind of zoom in. And it, I wanted to do a video on it, but it was just so difficult to see it, I just kind of scrapped the idea. But I have looked at this because we're talking about like 0.1 millimeter motion here. And that may not seem a lot, but if you're printing at, at 0.2 or 0.3 millimeter, you know, it can add up probably to, you know, 0 0.05 error, etc. Just kind of using rough numbers, so don't shoot me down below on the math. I'm just trying to give an idea. So this is why you may want to add a second Z axis to your Creality. And this is why I'm adding a second Z axis to my Creality, because what you'll see in some future videos is me doing uh, some experiments with how fast can I get it to go? You know, how quick? How is the point, you know, six working with all this? And kind of do some experiments along these lines because I like the idea of printing larger parts much faster. So 
Anyways, hopefully you found this video interesting and informative. Let me know down below your thoughts. I have links to this uh, down below, so if you're interested in getting yours. The other thing I'm going to be doing, you, you'll see some upcoming videos. This came in first. I'm also going to, because I'm going to point .6, I'm going to upgrade the extruder from the um, cheap plastic printed one to a formal one. And, and again, I want to set this guy up to be really a printing machine when it comes to, you know, uh, you know larger diameter, larger print. So... Anyways, swag shop up there, comment below, give it a big thumbs up, and we'll see all you guys in the next video. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel.